and welcome back to the channel. We've got a pretty sweet sled behind me here, but it's not quite ready to go for winter because I've got tunnel problems. The tunnel bowed out and it's breaking the brackets going to the track and this video is all about fixing it. I've also got some pretty cool guys here with me. We got Walter and Russell and Grandpa. So all together, we're gonna have this adventure of playing around in the shop, fixing some things and putting together some dollies too. So there's a little bit of snow out here, but not a lot. Uh, it's just before Christmas. We're having a pretty late winter. It got cold right away, but then it got warm again and it looks like it's gonna be warm till probably close to Christmas, but I wanna be ready so that we can go to the mountains and drive this sled. This is a 2022 Summit 850 SP. I got it from a neighbor who had it for one year, put 1200 miles on it and he took it to the mountain maybe twice. Well, he noticed while he was driving it or after he was driving it one time that the tunnel had bowed out quite a bit and it had cracked the brackets. They took it to the dealer, they assessed it and they totaled the thing out. So he bought it back from the insurance company. I got it for a pretty good deal. And, and that's, that's what I do. I usually don't buy stuff brand new. And uh, this is probably one of the best deals I've ever gotten actually. These brackets here are supposed to be straight, but you can tell that they go in. This one too. It is definitely not the best or the sturdiest design. You can see the crack right here. There's, it's already cracking across here. So this piece connects to here, obviously. And uh, we're gonna replace this piece here and this piece here. And I've got some stiffening pieces. Here's the new brackets. These come right from Skidoo, you can buy them. They do come raw. So they're gonna be a raw aluminum finish. And I had them powder coated. We do a lot of powder coated parts and the guy slipped them in for me. And so it's gonna look like it's factory. We're not gonna have a raw aluminum look. And then, BM Fabrications in Minnesota actually. I'm in North Dakota. They're, these guys are in Minnesota. They make a bumper stiffener, tunnel stiffener kit. And uh, really a much better design than, than this wimpy bumper that's on here. I mean, just look how, look how flimsy this is. This does pretty much nothing for you, for stiffness. So, getting rid of that and putting the new one on here. What do you got there, Walter? A tractor! A tractor? What's in your cup? Root beer! Root beer! Hey, Russell, what do you got? Trisco! I've taken off the clamps and the boards so you can see it better. I've already tweaked on it a little bit, but you can tell that there's a crease right here that I'm gonna have to get out. That way, this bracket here will actually sit flush with the outside tunnel. That's probably the hardest thing right now. I've already pushed the bow back with those clamps and I've been bending this back with this great big crescent wrench, adjustable wrench. Meanwhile, what are you guys doing? Putting together the ski dollies. Yeah. Picked these guys up on Amazon, Cyber Monday, Black Friday, something like that. Had mixed reviews. People said they're pretty flimsy, but they're really inexpensive. So I'm hoping if they are flimsy, we can just stiffen them up with something and get by with some cheaper ones. I've got it pretty straight now. I think I can chop this piece out and put in the new one. What we're doing is knocking out these little anvil pieces. And that's just part of the riveting process that these an anvils pull through the body of the rivet and cause it to clamp. There we go. Have a good drill bit. This one's kind of big, but it's a really good sharp one. It's got the step teeth and I've been trying it and it works good. There we go. There we've driven out the rest of the 
Prove it. All right. There it is. It's a wimpy cracked piece. Cracked here. Cracked here. Just about to fail. And this is after I strained it a bunch. It was really bent in this way. Still got some ways to go. All right. Here's where the blacksmithing comes in. That new bracket only comes with the two bottom holes. You have to actually drill the top ones yourself. From the factory, they must pierce it and use a different riveting gun because these are different rivets. We're making do. Having some challenges with the length of the rivet, but we're making it work. Daddy, look it! Look at that. Look, Dad, I'm Nice. We got some color putting the uh, bumper support on here. It's looking really nice. The snowmobile came in all black, but the previous guy put in this, this bluish color, I don't know if they call it sonic blue, skid plate. And I thought, hey, let's carry the accent forward or rearward. I'd say that's looking pretty sharp. Boys will be boys, right? We decided to put a nut or a bolt on the front one as well instead of rivet this. A couple reasons or two I can think of is one, you can't get the rivet gun straight on so then it pops it crooked. And then secondly, the thought is, you know what, at least I can keep this pretty flush on the inside, it's not gonna hit the track. Because if you notice, on the other side, here's the bolt head, it's a button head cap screw, and then here's the rivet, and I don't like how much this one sticks out. It's maybe the same amount, but it, see how crooked it is? I can get my fingernail behind there. Anyway, we're gonna do that on both of them. Now we're on the home stretch. We just gotta put in these remaining rivets up here on the top of the bracket. We'll drill those out, pop them in, and finish the bumper. Does that need that other drill bit on the other side, Russell? It's on the ground by the track. We are on the almost final steps of this whole refurb slash install. I've got a couple more holes to drill up here. Being this is a custom bumper, not all the holes are in place. So what they've got us doing is drilling two holes up here. I think it's oversized quarter inch hole. And then a couple three sixteenths, I believe there for rivets to keep this tight against the tunnel. Hmm. 
I'm going to try a little modification here. This is the bolt that B&M Manufacturing sends you. I do not like this Allen head style cap screw. These strip out really easy and they're obviously a very small button head. So the ones that came factory from Skidoo, I believe are these ones and they've got what's called a Torx bit. And I'm gonna use these, they're the wider head. If they work, I did find some nuts laying around and so I, if I can get these nuts to grab enough on the inside, I should have a winning combination. Here it is, we are finally done. And it actually looks pretty good. We'll see how it holds up over time. It's got 1500 miles on it now. It better make it past 3000 miles, I know that. But this should really help stiffen everything up. I'll show you around it. And a couple of things that I would do differently on this kit, I would do different hardware. I think they could definitely benefit from Torx bit hardware. They could skip the washers on the inside then get a little lower profile. And then I think I would do more holes. You can see there's quite a gap in here and I don't like that. So even if I put a rivet in here and over here, it's like it needs one right here. So I'm probably gonna have to go buy another black rivet. They send only two per side in a kit and that's a real bummer when you only get two in the kit and you need a third one. Now I get to go custom find one that looks just like it. So I'm gonna jack this uh, back up We'll get this connected. We'll see how it does. Obviously, I'm not gonna notice until if it starts to bend again, but we got the decals taken off. Any extra decals are off, but look at how sharp that looks. Isn't that neat? Yeah. And I have a suggestion for Skidoo. Reinforce this hanger. This is so weak. I mean, this thing should not be able to bow out just from normal riding. But they are inexpensive. They're like 50 bucks. So you can buy them 50 bucks. At least they weren't super expensive. It just takes a lot of time and obviously hassle, so. Thanks guys for watching. Appreciate you. Thanks for checking out the channel and hopefully this helped you. I did all this for the first time and that's why I wanted to document it because this will save you who are considering doing what I had to do a lot of time. The bracket started out worse than this. Look at this thing. That's the hanger bracket. That's supposed to be straight. This one's not cracked. The other one was cracked pretty bad. Look at that crack right there. And then it also was cracking down here where it hangs on to the idler for the track. So if you start to see your tunnel bow out, you better get that addressed right away. It's a lot of work. You gotta have drill bits, punches. You gotta have a dad who knows a little bit of black, blacksmithing. Uh, he's always great at straightening metal. Aluminum's pretty easy to straighten, but you gotta just do it in the right ways, have good backing. I do really like their product. It's gonna definitely stiffen this up. I think it's gonna be better here too. So I am ready to ride. All right guys, God bless.